So if you're a JavaScript developer in the past one or so year, chances are that you heard about Facebook's Flux at least once before. Maybe you went to Facebook's website to read some documentation, maybe even tried it before, and maybe you had some problems understanding it, because getting the idea behind Flux can be quite tricky. And this is exactly why I'm here today. This is my very short introduction about Facebook's Flux. To get it out of the way, Flux is not a framework. It is more an idea or a concept that you can apply. Flux is emphasizing unidirectional data flow, but what exactly does that mean? Unidirectional means the data can only flow in one direction and never back. Here's how it works. So it all starts with an action. Imagine your action says, give me all books. It calls a dispatcher to propagate the event, which is then doing some Ajax stuff and putting the result into a store. The store is then emitting an event to tell components that subscribe to it that data has changed. Your view is then consuming the data from the store. Pretty simple so far, right? But that is not everything yet. Imagine the user clicks a button to delete a book. Instead of calling a controller to delete your book, you again call an action which is then propagating the event to the same dispatcher and back to the store you just used. Because all actions will always go through the same dispatcher, you have unidirectional data flow. All components will always know when data has changed and can update appropriately. So how exactly can you use Flux? Actually there are many implementations out there, but I'll be concentrating on the official one only. To use Flux, all you technically need is an event system. Facebook's official implementation is providing a dispatcher class, which we're going to use. It all starts with the dispatcher. We subclass the dispatcher class and add a handle action method. All actions will always go through here. Next up, we add actions. These are all the actions that viewers can use to interact with our stores. In our case, this is just a load books action. As you can see, all the action is doing is calling the dispatcher with some parameters and an action type. We are using a constant here for the type, but technically you can use whatever you want. Our most important class will be the store. We subclass event emitter to be able to tell our components that things changed and provide functions for them to subscribe and unsubscribe. Another important thing here is the get books function, which components will use to get data back from the store. Right after the store, we're going to subscribe to our event dispatcher that we created earlier. However, we're only going to handle the types that we're actually able to handle. Everything else, we just ignore. Now here's the important part. Once something changes inside the store, we're going to use the emit change function of our store to tell components that new data is available. Now let's get to the actual React component. Here's a very simple skeleton of how your component could look like. The important bits are inside component did mount and component will unmount. Here we're going to subscribe to our store and tell it to execute an onChange function whenever the store changes. OnChange will then just retrieve the data out of the store and update the local component state with it. Whenever we want to perform an action, we're just going to use our predefined actions to interact with the store as seen here. And that's it, you just wrote your first Flux app. Let's review. Calling an action will dispatch an event at our app dispatcher. The dispatcher in return will distribute this event to all subscribed stores and the stores will then update their data. Once that's done, the store is emitting a change event and the components that subscribe to it will update. Pretty simple, right? As you can see, using and understanding Flux is actually quite simple. I hope with this video I could make it easier for you to understand. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer them. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.